police officers of Reddit, what are you thinking when you see cases like George Floyd? I'm a former police officer, and so have had plenty of training in physical restraint of individuals being arrested. There is no police academy training officers to kneel on someone's neck to subdue them, that's how you kill a person. There is extensive training on how to avoid seriously injuring a person while restraining them, and I guarantee you every one of these officers was trained to never strike a person in the neck or choke them. The officer who killed him is very clearly liable for manslaughter at the very least, and I think the other officers who stood by have some accountability as well, because they knew damn well that was not how you handle a person, and should have stepped up. Here's my question, given that this officer was actively killing a man, through an illegal use of force, what would have happened had a non-police officer stopped him? Granted, then the outcome wouldn't have killed the man and thus there would have been no death to show that the use of force was obviously excessive. But that's the part that really makes me angry. Anyone who would have tried to stop this would have been arrested on the spot for assaulting an officer, even though the officer was literally murdering another human being. Lawyer here. While the literal text of most justification, necessity defenses would apply to using force in that situation, most likely the Good Samaritan would be charged with obstruction or interference with public duties. They would then have to convince a jury that there was no other reasonable recourse short of physical force. That's a tall order and I'd be real nervous for my client. In a worst case scenario, our hypothetical Samaritan gets tased or shot or killed for their troubles. My thoughts? Record and verbally demand the officer stop is probably the wisest course. But, that is exactly what happened. And clearly the end result is that the cop didn't stop and someone died. The wisest course, because unfortunately a more interfering action may get you seriously hurt or killed. Not a local, I'm a fed. Five years into the job, George Floyd was murdered and it's freaking disgusting. We're trained that anything involving the neck is a no-go and is considered deadly force. We were also trained that if you make an arrest in a prone position, you search and then immediately move them onto their side or a seated position because the risk of asphyxiation is so great. If a suspect says they can't breathe, believe the man take measures to correct to it. This training is reinforced at least twice a year in our use of force training. These officers deserve to spend the rest of their leaves in prison. It's reassuring to hear this. Any suggestions on how employment screening could be improved to avoid letting people like this join the ranks and tarnish the reputation of all the good cops? Retired after 28 years. Nothing less than murder. All the guys I worked with would never have considered doing something like that. You treat combative in custodies once they're secured as human beings. Nothing should be personal. Once they've been subdued and you are safe as an officer, you stand him up, pat him down and understand that your arrestee is at a low point in his life. Give him some dignity and you'll generally get his respect. It works 90 plus percent of the time. That man was subdued and nobody should have been on him at the point. The key phrase I keep hearing, reading in these cases, whether bad cop directly suffocates, strangles someone or fibrillates their heart with a taser, or cracks their skull, or maybe didn't touch the metal is, I can't breathe. Seems to me that this phrase should be an automatic emergency ambulance ride. You shouldn't look at someone who is having difficulty breathing, and then, for example, sit on them, on top of hot asphalt. You get the medical attention before they drop dead. That is, if you don't want them to die, um... Cop here. Disgusted. There are 1,000 reasons why this shouldn't have happened. Simple, easy, steps that should have been taken. Lessons that policing has learned over the past 200 years and basic things taught in every academy. Make no mistake, this was murder. Maybe not premeditated murder, but nonetheless murder. I will be angry if those officers do not get indicted. He's apparently been involved in at least two other deaths including shooting a fleeing suspect in the back. I don't know given that history premeditation seems reasonable. That is inexcusable. I was a cop in the military. In the police academy this was one of the things that taught us not to do, as it could crush the windpipe. The only time I was ever taught to use chokes and neck holds was in combat training for deployments. But when we got back we always had to attend retraining classes to relearn what we can do stateside. It's amazing that time and time again you see military saying this is exactly not what to do. But for some reason the civilian trainers seem to forget to teach the same. Would I rather be a POW to an American soldier versus American cop I'll take soldier every time. You know what's sad is I've been told police agencies don't want to hire MPs, because they're harder to retrain. Yet time and time again we prove them wrong by being better trained in humanitarianism. Well clearly they're right. MPs are harder to retrain, in their way, 
I was an MP and tried to become a civilian cop when I got out. But you gotta drink the Kool-Aid to be a cop in the 21st century. I got value out of my time as an MP, but I never got on board with the law enforcement subculture that has taken over the job. My brother and my best friend are police, and their whole identity is being a cop. From how they dress and what they watch and how they lean politically. Retired, it disgusts me as the job is difficult enough, as it is, working mostly in sensitive neighborhoods. Brutality like this makes it far more difficult. How difficult was it for you to build community trust? Did you have to continuously fight against atrocities such as the recent cases, or was your community more sheltered from those issues? I worked in a place where the population was about 75% black. As a white cop, I very quickly learned a lot about being respectful and how to be tactful. Humor goes a long way and it's very important not to give off any sign of being fearful. They can sense it. You get used to shouts of abuse as you drive by and guys on the corner will try to provoke you by openly drinking beer. Is it illegal? Yes, but you learn to pick your battles. If you do ever need to stop someone and question them, you know that if you take too long, you will suddenly find yourself surrounded by an angry crowd who have no idea what you are asking. People in these areas are almost always reluctant to even be seen conversing with a cop out of fear of being seen as a snitch. It is true that if you do need to make an arrest, there will almost always be some level of resistance, which makes things very difficult as once you have made the commitment to make the arrest, you have to go through with it. I am not in any way making excuses for the cops in this particular video, but it isn't easy. However, the cop with his knee on the pool guy appears to be of the alpha male type of cop. These guys are bullies by nature and very difficult to work with if you personally police to different standards. It's very difficult to intervene as a partner as you will likely be ostracized. You take this route and your career is over. Your social life is over. Your marriage will have problems as cop families are pretty close. Interesting last paragraph. Thanks for your perspective. That last paragraph is everything. Since we're tapping into the police community here, can someone please explain what, if anything, the bystanders could have done to help George Floyd? Call 911 and report police brutality? In all seriousness, what is the preventative action here since none of the police officers on the scene, four of which were physically restraining him, reacted to his being murdered right in front of them? You could call 911 and ask for a supervisor to go on scene, but there very well could have been SGT on scene since I arced there were four officers there already. At the minimum he called 911 and the call was recorded and noted, even that won't do much, because by the supervisor gets there the damage will have already been done sad face, not necessarily, the supervisor can call them and do something. I got pulled over in high school for turning without signaling. The cop asked us where we were going and then if you could search the car. The driver told them no. So they ordered us all out of the car into the cold and told us we couldn't wear our jackets, because there might be weapons in them. We were going to wait for the K-9 unit to come sniff the car for drugs. The driver called his mum when we first got pulled over, because honestly, as black people, we are afraid of cops and feel they are a danger to us. This was in 2003 long before BLM. She called to check up on us 30 minutes later and we were still pulled over. She got busy and called back two hours later to ask what had happened. We told her we were still outside waiting for the canine unit. She called the station and asked for their supervisor. The supervisor called the officers and they immediately let us go. Not sure how recent this was, but there was recently a Supreme Court case that came down and said that making you wait for the K9S an unreasonably long time, even 30 minutes is absurd violates your rights under either the unlawful detention, search and seizure, or some other interpretation if they had no other probably cause to hold you. So the supervisor did the right thing to save their skin. Ah, a post I can finally answer. Based in Scotland, I'm a police officer with five years service, two of which I have been a part-time officer safety instructor. During this training we go over retraining subjects and handcuff techniques that we use to a T. This includes all safety aspects including where to apply handcuffs, how tight they should be, ensuring the technique is done correctly and that the subject is in a controlled, but safe position. Positional asphyxia is a vital topic we cover and it is reiterated time and time again that if a subject ends up on the ground we never, and I reiterate again, never, place any sort of weight on them. Hell even when sitting in the back of our cars, we watch them and ensure they can breath and are in a comfortable position for transport. What these cops did was just plain stupid, disproportionate and frankly an embarrassment to policing. I'd also use disgusting if I'm honest. I just hope that people know we are not like this. Visited Scotland a couple years ago and loved it. 
Most jarring thing on the whole trip was walking into the Glasgow airport to fly back to the US and seeing cops with assault rifles standing near the escalators. Didn't run into any cops during the rest of my time there, but had in the back of my head that they're typically not armed. I guess airports are a special threat environment. UK police aren't routinely armed, but there are always armed police, usually on fast cars so they can get to specific calls, reports quickly if there's a hint of a possibility that someone is armed. They also patrol high-risk places, usually airports, but also any places deemed high-risk for possible terrorist attack. I have a degree in law enforcement and work in corrections in Minnesota. My thoughts are frick that guy. Nobody is taught to put their knee on a guy's neck and leave it there until he passes out and dies. He may as well have had his hands around the man's neck. If I were to go off the video evidence, the officer should be arrested for murder. That's the crazy thing about this case. It couldn't be more blatant. The footage was clear, long-lasting and heart-wrenching. If there isn't hell to pay with this cleave of evidence then protests are absolutely justified. The Rodney King case had the same type of evidence and look where that went. I can't understand why, but these cops can get away with murder with a slap on the wrist unfortunately. What about that guy who was arrested? Because the cops broke into the wrong house and killed GF, and in self-defense he shot a cops. I put a serious tag if I were you. I don't know. I don't think it's sort of thing people joke about. That said, I reckon there will be a lot of not a police officer but, um, comments. Not a police officer but, I agree. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video please smash the like button and leave a comment which story you liked the most. Subscribe and hit the bell notification for updates on our latest videos. And don't forget to check the links in the description box for more awesome content.